My last relationship, we broke up because he asked me to marry him, but then he asked me to sign a prenuptial agreement, and I said absolutely not. I think that's bogus. I'm not going to sign a piece of paper that says that if you leave me, I get nothing. Like, no, I think that I should have half of everything that you've worked your entire life for. And I think that's fair. My life. Yeah, I heard the story of Steven Jackson. Steven Jackson and his fiance was set to get married. Leading up to the wedding, he was asking her to sign the prenuptial agreement. She was stalling. The day of the wedding, he tried to get her to sign it, or she tried to say she'll do it afterwards. You know what my boy did? My boy left her at the altar, called the wedding off. To be honest with you, I'm glad she decided not to sign it the day of the wedding, because if they had gotten divorced, she could have said, oh, she signed it under duress. You know how hard be having to work to get where they at just for somebody to feel as though they're gonna take half of your shit because they was laying up with you a gentleman and a scholar i hate it when i do something semi-romantic and my wife pointed out like if i open the door and she get the ah, ah, ah. come on son now you just doing too much. Or if I might randomly just start rubbing her feet. What you trying to say? What the f is you doing in my deep freezer? <laughs> get the f out of my deep freezer right now. Why don't you get your ass in my deep freezer? It's hot, mom. Hey, yo. <laughs> Y'all don't know how happy I am to be in Atlanta where we have like central AC. When I lived in Brooklyn, we had the fans that you put in the window. We did have an air conditioning unit that you put in the window, but out of the 24 hours in a day, my aunt only allowed us to turn that on for about an hour or two hours. And then after that, you had to fend for yourself, go outside, sit on the fire escape and get some breeze because she wasn't trying to run up her electricity bill. She didn't care how hot it was. I know it's about 25,000 of you guys that watch these videos that still haven't subscribed. Hit that subscribe button. Come on now, we almost at 100K, man. We almost at 100K. And follow me on the gram. Follow me on Instagram. Most men provide better containment and positive ownership for the cars they own than the women in their lives. Like, if you've got a guy who really, really loves his car, takes his car as a part of himself, you know, he's, like, learning everything there is to learn about that car, and he knows where you can and can't drive it, he knows what the make and model is, you know. He's, like, sitting out there rubbing it with a diaper, he's, like, making sure there's a security system. So, if men had that same attitude towards the women in their lives, believe me, they would have good relationships. Mm. And also, the women in their lives would tolerate more distance. My wife be talking that same type of talk. I'm going to be honest with you guys. What you put into a car is what you get out. If you take care of your car, your car's going to take care of you. The thing about a woman is that in the back of your mind, you know that there's a chance that she could disappoint you. You might be willing to do all this extra shit and make her feel special, and then one thing could set her off. And now you feel stupid. Hey, yo, this shit's bugging me, bro. Oh, this is the orange drink Miss Jenny from the block was talking about. This was a 25 cent. If you know, she ain't know the name. It's a fruit barrel. Come on. That was a quarter that water. That ma'am is a quarter water. Quarter all water. birthday parties, all the functions, all the cookouts. This juice right here, we used to call it teenies. Teenies? What is quarter water? Where juice barrel comes from? It's a fruit from? barrel. That's not what we call that shit, man. Listen. What you used to call this shit? A going? quarter water. Write that shit in the comments. Let me know. I don't know what the hell they talking about, but that's a hug. In Philly, we call that a hug. A, a hug. hug. Not a barrel. Not a quarter water. None of that. The hell is it's a hug? A hug. Hey, yo, this shit's bugging me, bro. 
I'm not tripping. It was a quarter order. You had that, and then you had the 50 cent juice, the one that was bigger. And then you had the bummies. Y'all remember the bummies? It's like, yo, don't drink no bummies. If you drink bummies, you're not gonna be able to have kids. I don't even know who started that rumor. Y'all remember that? There's the 50 cent soda. They had all the different flavors. My favorite was pineapple. A hug. Is it still a quarter? It's probably what's going on. That's why these kids are so confused. It's probably more expensive now, but back in my day, it was a quarter, so we called it a quarter water. Growing up in Harlem in the early 2000s, stepping outside every day was like a fashion show. I Thanks. didn't even know what name brand was until I was like 13. I bought my first pair of Nikes in the ninth grade. The only stores I shopped in at that time was Payless and Conway. I didn't know no better, so I bought my first name brand stuff from 28th Street. Now, this is when everybody was wearing Von Dutch. Now, I could have kept it calm and just got me a little trucker hat or something, but nah, I bought a whole sweatsuit. When I got home i realized it said von dutch on the outside but on the inside of the sweater it so had a baby, baby fat. fat symbol so the first time i stepped <laughs> out in the sweater hey <laughs> yo i remember those von dutch slash baby fats uh velour suits bro that everybody was on me, you know, like, uh-oh, Mecca getting money now, she fly, uh-uh-uh. I wore that sweater outside every day for like two months straight. Then one day I got too comfortable, took the sweater off and left it on the bench. I'm in the Bro. corner playing double dutch, then all of a sudden I hear this boy yo, hey yo, who fake ass sweater is this? I turn around, he waving a Von Dutch sweater in the air like a flag. Everybody quiet, looking around to see who gonna claim the fake sweater. Dang, he couldn't even put the sweater back down and mind his business. He like, well, since it's nobody's sweater, I'ma just throw it away. That sweater was one of the five good pieces of clothing I had, fake or not. So I put my head down, I raised my hand, and I did my walk of shame to go collect my fake sweater. I took my talents back to Conway, and I never tried to step out of my lane again. Y'all don't understand. Nowadays, y'all young can go to h&m and y'all can get them you know h&m jeans for 30 dollars and, and y'all can step out and y'all cool back in them days well then again i don't know how old she was yo when i was growing up you even had to have some rockaway some sean johns coogee you had to be fly then folks was wearing basketball jerseys it was a certain type of nba jersey you had to wear because if it wasn't hardwood classic they was getting on you let me tell y'all my story how about this when I first came to this country, my father sent me to a private school. I went to Ebenezer, Kings Highway in Brooklyn. It was right in the wintertime and everybody had boots. So I wanted to blend in, so I told my father, oh, I need some boots for school. He's like, all right, I got you. My father took me to Payless. Now, I wasn't up on game. I went to Payless, and I was like, oh my God. Because mind you, I'm coming from the Caribbean. I'm coming from going to school bare feet, or I'm going to school with some slippers. I'm coming from that to going to Payless where it's nothing but sneakers and shoes in here. So I'm like, oh yeah, I'm finna get me some boots. I'm, I'm, I'm in there. Got the boots. I couldn't wait till Monday so I could show off. Monday come, lace my boots up. I get up in there. They on my ass. I'm like, yo, why are they on my ass like this? I ain't realize them boys was wearing Tim's and my boots was glaciers. Oh my God, boy, them folks ain't let me... They ain't let me live for the rest of the school year. I ain't gonna hold you though. It was even between them glaciers or some church shoes. Yeah, I kept it rocking with my church shoes, man. I was good. I ain't want no smoke, bro. And then once I went to public school, it got worse. Whatever I experienced in private school was nothing compared to what I experienced in public school. But the crazy thing is, a lot of the kids that were making fun of my clothes when I was in school, whether it be junior high school, high school, elementary school, are not with me in life as adults. I can honestly say that. I'll be seeing them on Facebook. When I first met my husband, I was working my engineering job with my own place while he was sleeping on our mentor's couch with a roommate whose cat used to piss on all of his clothes. And guess what? I used to sleep on that couch that probably had a thousand asses across it with him. And then only dated the second time. He had his own studio apartment, but he was sleeping on the floor. And guess what? I slept on that floor with him. And then when he decided to quit his job to build out his credit repair business, I'm the one that financially supported us for four months and then put my dreams to the side for a year in order to help him build it. And it was the best investment I've ever made in my life. And before all the traumatized girlies coming here talking about it could never be them, let me put you on game real quick. 
instead of looking for a man with money, I was looking for a man who was honest, dedicated, passionate, intense, purpose-driven, selfless, caring, with a big-ass heart and a big-ass dream. And in return, I got the happiest, healthiest marriage that I could ask for and the most perfect husband that I could have never fabricated in my mind. And I decided to stick beside him and support him in whatever he needed because I knew because of the man that he is, he was going to be successful in whatever he did. And because of my investment, now instead of spending all of his money, I get to spend all of our money. And yes, there's a difference. When I first met my husband... See, and when I tell my wife, this like this the type of shit we went through, but I wasn't sleeping on nobody but my ass couch. Well, we weren't even married yet. But still, like I wasn't able to provide, bro. Like, I was out here working a job, not barely making ends meet. She was the one footing all the bill. So now I'm getting extra money. She deserved that shit. If me and my wife don't work out and I'm still where I'm at financially, it's going to be hard for me to accept another woman, bro, as far as, like, taking her serious. Because you come, you coming into something that's already established. I can go suck Kevin come kiss you. And it has no bounds for me. That's when you get embarrassed. That's when you get mad to where you want to put your hands on me. I don't care. I been since 2019 ain't changing. I'm 24 years old. I was 19 when I first met Kevin. Ain't nothing changed. It's going to be me and Kevin until the end of time. And this is going to be me and Christopher until the end of time. Because I love you, dog, or my baby daddy. I want to have more kids with you. But I'm going to suck you as soon as you make me mad. And you know that every time. Like... You act like when you got to Kevin's house, I was going to get out the car. Why would I get out the car when I get to Kevin's house when I see your friend car behind me? Hey, you have to wait your turn and go through my phone like you do any other time I'm with Kevin. You have to wait your turn and go through my phone and then get mad about it later on. And say, Erica, so you telling me on this day you was with him and you swear, you knew I was with him. Why are you acting so crazy? Who is Kevin? Kevin is the guy when I was 19. That's who Kevin is. Kevin is the guy when I was 19 years old, before TikTok, before Snapchat, before anything. Kevin is who I met when I was 19, and I've been cheating on who my baby daddy since I was 19. That's who Kevin is. That's who Kevin is. And he know who Kevin is, because that was the first time my baby daddy ever bust my lip before. Yes, because he caught me sucking the car. Y'all better do your homework on me. I literally just, I fuck with Kevin so heavy, that's my man. I can go suck Kevin. Yo. Yeah. This that hood love. I have a, a homegirl. Well, actually, it's a family member. I have a family member who has had the same side since like 2006 or 2005. I think like 2005, since we was in like high school, bro. And she has cheated on each one of her boyfriends with the same dude. In my mind, I'm like, yo, why don't you just make him your boyfriend? Why don't you just get married to him? Right? Wouldn't it make sense to just get married to him? Every boyfriend she has ever had. She has cheated on him with this man. I'm going to tell y'all boys this. I know we walk around here delusional. I want you to understand that your woman can't get... You're not going to know everything. Right now, your woman could have a side dude that's touching the bottom of the well, bro. He could find the Titanic in her ocean. It's just an example I'm giving you. It's certain dudes out here. Now, as men, we wouldn't admit this. We wouldn't even want to think about this. In our mind, this is so far-fetched because we... A lot of us think we're the finest thing since sliced bread. But somewhere out there in this world, it's a guy. If he get a hold of your woman, she's forever gone. Even if she never see him again in life. I can't say the C word on here. I can't say the C pipe word. But what I would say is he got that rehab. You don't want nobody touching your woman at all. Period. But I'm telling you, you don't want nobody hitting your wife with that rehab. I had a homie that um he was cool with this young lady. And one day they happened to cross the line. Yeah, she was at the studio. We was at the studio. She dropped him off. We was like, damn, bro. Y'all was chilling. You know? He's like, yeah, bro. She finally decided to give me the pussy. Now, mind you, she was married. So now, she dropped him off at the studio. She go home. She texting this man. And she texting this man stuff like, yo, I can still feel you inside of me. What could you imagine... Your woman phone and seeing that message, I can still feel you inside of me. She telling that to another man. But fast forward, bro. I don't know if he hit again. I don't know what happened. She got a divorce. What is an artist that's so popular but you just can't get into their music? Like, and I don't want to see nothing dumb in the comments. Like, y'all better not be talking about some Janae Aiko and some Walker. Like, that's ridiculous. For me, Taylor Swift, 
I just can't get into it. Like, actually really fangirl over it. Me too. Um, Kodak Black. Like, I could get jiggy a couple of times. Um, also, Rod Wave. No. No. It's just certain music that I really can't get into. Mm. Who is that artist for you? What is the artist? I'm going to keep it funky. I can't get into that NBA young boy. I'm sorry. I feel as an NBA young boy is for the young I have tried. I've tried listening to them songs. You know, I've tried smoking and then listening to them songs. I, I just can't do it. I just mentioned to someone that I was about to come on social media and she said, like that? And I'm like, like what? This is what the world ought to see because this is also a part of the problem. Folks have created a whole life filled with lies and they can't even show up as their true selves. Mm, now they deep. depressed. Falling out of love with themselves. That's deep. Upset and angry at everybody. That's because deep. they can't even be themselves. That's not my story. I am in my natural state. I'm walking around with a bleached out hoodie. I'm eating a whole fish on a paper plate. Because I don't want to wash no dishes on this beautiful Sunday. And you think y'all are about to force me to show up any other way. But how I would normally show up on a good old Sunday. I think not. <laughs> I think not. I appreciate the message you're giving out there. But everybody don't look like you. You can talk like this because you're naturally beautiful. The message she's giving is true. Social media is very fake. Even women that aren't as attractive as her, I feel as though you guys should come on social media in your natural state. This will balance things out because it's a lot of people out here try to mimic what they see on social media in their day-to-day -day life. And a lot of times the things on social media are fake and pre-planned.